Hey, hey guys, it's a vlog. Been a long time since we had a chance to do a vlog, and I've just been really busy with work. The day job's taking up all my time. It's now uh, September, and this is really my favorite time of the year. I just like the temperature is great, uh, the climate is great for me up here in Montreal. Not too hot, not too cold. It's a good day to get out, take some sun, relax, although I'm busy with work. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't, uh, get up, stretch a little bit, do five push-ups, do some stretches, do the bow splits. You do that every day and uh, maybe a couple of chin-ups. You'd be in tip-top shape because sitting all day as a nerd, not good for your body, not good for your body at all. So it's good to get up, do a little bit of exercise. So yeah. It was getting a little noisy out there, I decided to bring it back inside. So. Uh, I was doing some reading recently, and apparently Python has like shot up the charts in terms of its popularity on uh, Stack Overflow. If you don't know what that is, it's the biggest site in terms of answering your code questions. And uh, I'm not surprised because Python is such a flexible language in terms of its use case. So I'll translate that into non-nerd. That means that Python's used in many different areas. So let's compare that to, let's say, uh, the once upon a time language, or well, darling language of the uh, hipster nerds. And that was Ruby combined with the Ruby framework called Rails, a web framework. Once upon a time, this was like so cool and hipster and cool and everybody. But the thing is, is that Ruby never took off in any other directions. For a little while, it had some mojo with regards to web app creation, but it's now fading quite fast because all the new hipsters, new hipster nerds, have moved into JavaScript and Node, that's what they love, and Rails is kind of old school, and the problem that Ruby has is that that's all it does. You know, it could be used to do all kinds of different things, I'm sure, but really, in the marketplace, if you're writing Ruby, you're writing Rails apps, web apps. But Python, on the other hand, you can do web apps, you can do server processes and automation, you can do data sciences, you can do ML and AI, machine learning AI, you can do web apps. It's very, very flexible. And so I'm not surprised at all that you see Python growing, growing popularity. Also, Python's used quite a bit in schools because the interesting thing about the Python program, programming language, though it has a very simple to understand syntax, it's really, Syntax is a nerd word for the code that you actually write. It's, it looks simpler and it reads simpler than other languages like JavaScript or Java or C Sharp or uh, PHP. So it's a good first language to learn in that regard. Also, Python does not skimp on its capabilities or its sophistication. Though it has a very simple to read code, it has very sophisticated concepts expressed in the language itself. And as I keep saying to people, the difference between the professional developer and the amateur is that the professional developer has a really good understanding of the core concepts of programming, regardless of the language. And once you have that solid foundation, that core, then for you to be able to learn this framework or that framework or this type of Python programming or that type of pro Python programming will become super, super easy. So, you know, to address that hole, to address that situation rather, I created my Python course to really teach the foundation, to teach the core. Then all those YouTube walkthrough videos that you can't understand now on Python, all those online articles you see about Python, how to do this, how to do that, all of, all of a sudden those things become super easy to understand and to do because you have that foundation. That's something I discovered years and years ago in the 90s when I was trying to learn I forget what the language, I think it was like uh, when I was getting into, it was JavaScript in fact, and I was having trouble writing some of the code and I found that my problem was not understanding a framework or not understanding a library. The problem was not understanding some fundamental concept in which the library was based upon. And because I didn't understand that concept clearly, that library was very difficult to get my head wrapped around. So when I went back and worked on the foundation, the core concepts, the core aspects of the language, 
then all of a sudden that uh, framework, that library was very understandable. And that's the key to everything. It's kind of funny because it's the same thing with uh, drumming. It's the same thing with martial arts, et cetera, et cetera. I'll give you an example. In martial arts, when I was younger, I remember it was, there was something magical about martial arts. I started when I was 10. And uh, it was almost like voodoo, the way some people, the way that people would kick or take people down, the flipping, the throwing, the locks, etc., etc., the submissions. This was all uh, voodoo to me. It was kind of magical. But as I became more and more advanced, it became less magical because I started understanding what actually was going on. And then I was able to reduce it down to its very basic form. So all of a sudden, 20 different locks actually only became one lock. 20 different takedowns only became really two takedowns. Now, if you've done advanced martial arts, you know exactly what I mean. What I'm trying to say is that we had like 20 different types of uh, submissions, for instance, but at the end of the day, it only came down to one or two moves that are just executed in a slightly different way. And you see that with programming as well. You see a bunch of different frameworks and you see basic concepts executed in a slightly different way that may um, expedite a certain type of project. Expedite means get to the end, if you will, to get it done faster. Anyhow, I'm going off on a tangent. So Python is really uh, growing and it will continue to grow because AI and machine learning is just starting. And it's funny, a lot of the JavaScript people are going into JavaScript because they want to do JavaScript on the client, meaning in the web browser, and they want to do JavaScript uh, on the server, knows it, and they argue, wow, you just need to learn one language. Well, that's cool, but with, uh, with Python, you could do web apps, you could do AI, you can do machine learning, you can do software or server automation and processing, you could do data science, you could do uh, easy web scraping. It's all kinds of stuff you could do with it. The downside to Python, because every, nothing's perfect. There's always a downside. Everything's got an up and a down. The downside to Python is that it, um, it's kind of slow. At runtime, it, it isn't the fastest, that's for sure. Like, in terms of like server operations, if you developed an app, a web app in Python versus PHP, PHP will run circles around it. But PHP, oh, it's pretty much good for, you know, in terms of commercial purposes, is, you know, web app creation. But to me, it's the king, to me. Um, and it's much, much faster at runtime, meaning when you run the code, it's much, much faster. It takes much, much less memory, uh, much less RAM, memory, RAM, same thing, much less CPU to get the same job done. But PHP is very specialized in what it does. So Python's slowness is made up for its flexibility and its, and its uh, easy to read syntax. These days, computers and servers are so fast though, this speed issue is really 99% of the time not an issue. That's why more and more companies are adopting Python. And it's a great avenue. It's a great language to learn. That's why I just put out a course on Python and it teaches that solid core that I talked about but what I'm going to do because of popular demand, I'm actually going to add two modules to the course, and I'm going to, hopefully going to get it done this week, assuming that my day job doesn't take up uh, all my time as it sometimes does. Uh, my day job, by the way, is uh, helping schools teach code. But anyway, um, yes, with the Python, I'm going to add a module on um, careers in Python. I'm going to look at the three career paths that you can uh, pursue in Python the pros and cons of each, and how you would prepare yourself and map yourself, and, and excuse me, I would point the way to each of these paths. And I think that will be very valuable to people. And finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out some really interesting resources, extended learning, if you will, from Python, in Python that you can find out there, that's free, some not free, and in books. And uh, again, because just like I learned from my martial arts, it's, it's, you know, it's good to learn from multiple sources to get different points of view, get different takes uh, in terms of a, of a technology. To me, martial arts were just different fighting technologies. So even in uh, boxing, I saw a couple of different people in, uh, in different types of kung fu, different people 
uh, different types of judo, even though judo's judo is judo is judo, but different teachers have different takes on things. So having been taught judo by a few different teachers was beneficial because I was able to get everybody's point of view, etc., etc., etc. So you may think I have the best Python course ever created, but I still say after you've done it and you've got that foundation, even the lousy Python courses where they walk you through stuff, which most of the Python courses are just walkthroughs, really. They don't. They leave a lot of holes in what they're teaching because most of these people are not teachers. Um, yeah, even those courses will become uh, valuable to you or useful to you because once you have that foundation where you understand the core principles, then to learn anything else, as I said, is like it's super fast, super easy. Anyway, that's it. Um, and that business stuff I talked about previously, I am going to address it. My apologies. Like I said. Uh, uh, we have a bunch of new schools that we had to onboard over the last couple of weeks that took up all my time, so I wasn't able to. Well, I was able to do a couple of vlogs, but I wasn't able to, to really address that particular thing. I will soon. Ciao.